I can't hear for some reason. Now, hopefully, you should be able to hear me. Is that better? Uh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, I can it helps hear. if I turn my mic on. That that usually helps these things. <laughs> so I was saying hello to Sarah. I think we got one more person that hopped in here. Uh, oh, it looked like she just rejoined there. Perfect. She was probably thinking, why isn't my sound working? And uh, <laughs> now it is. <laughs> Perfect. There it is. Sarah, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Oh, you're there. Cool. You can hear me all right? Yeah. All right. So as I was saying, uh, uh, if you props are helpful, blocks are always nice. Uh, they're not required. I teach uh, assuming that you don't have blocks, but if you have them, uh, they can be quite helpful. So we'll get started sitting on one of those blocks if you have one. Uh, if not, we can just find a comfortable seated position on the floor. Right. Let's go to that. Perfect. <sighs> so as you settle into a seated position that's comfortable for you, it doesn't need to look like this. We're going to sit up a little bit taller, hands on the thighs. And we'll just start to breathe. Breathing consciously. Filling into the belly. You may close the eyes, which will serve to heighten the awareness of your kind of internal awareness. And as we slow these breaths down, we take longer to inhale, take even longer to exhale. Do a little body scan from head to toe. Just kind of check in and say, what's, what's going on? Right? I was in the car for several hours yesterday. And so I feel you know, tightness into my hips, uh, my low back, feeling a little stiffer than usual. So each time we sit down and, and take these moments at the beginning of class, just see how the body is doing today. Maybe maybe different from the last time you came to the mat. Okay. Let's drop the chin. Start to circle that head around nice and slow. No need to rush anything. And again, we're taking inventory, seeing how the body is reacting to our movements. And maybe the other way around, how our movements are reacting to the body. Other way. Let's find center. As you inhale, big reach of the arms upward. Feel the rib cage expanding out wide. Exhale, arms down alongside your body. Two more, just like that. Big inhale. And exhale. That last one here. Arms out to a T. We're going to close the fist. If you want things a little bit more intense today, you can even curl those fists in, right? Like we're revving that motorcycle. We're going to inhale, twist the right fist up, left fist down. Inhale back the other way and exhale. This time the left fist turns up, right fist turns down. Good. Two more on each side. And really see how much you can twist into that, right? Really squeeze, breathe in. Other side, wringing out that towel. Last breath here. Good. 
back to neutral. Just shake the arms out. We're going to bring the hands to the floor as we come into all fours. Hands and knees here. We get that spine moving a little bit more here. Inhale, we'll arch the back. This is our cow. And as you exhale, round down. Push down into the floor. Send the upper back towards the ceiling there. Inhale, arching. Bringing the shoulder blades together, looking up. Exhale, round down. I'm trying to take a peek underneath you at your navel. Good, inhale. And exhale. Hey, Kate, welcome. Take a few moments here, just a little cat-cow freestyle. That can be side to side. That can be forward and back. It can be any combination of movement that feels good. You can even move your hands. I like to get weird with it, try to find the angles that feel a little, I don't know, a little funky. Maybe not as normal as you may move your body. Finding your way back to that center position, shoulders right over the hands, we're in that all fours position. Let's shoot our hips up and back to downward facing dog. And this one might be your first one of the day or first one in a while, so take it easy. Bend into the knees, allow your body to ease into this. We'll be in this shape plenty more times today, so let this first one be a little bit more mellow. As the shoulders open up, as the hamstrings, like I said, I was driving a bunch this weekend, so uh, I'm really feeling this. So you might be feeling the effects of the last couple of days in your body as well. You don't need to harbor any judgment, just noticing what it is. Let's inhale, come forward to that plank. Hold here. Really spread the fingers, grab into the floor. One more breath in. Exhale, send the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Maybe noticing this getting a little bit more open. I'm pedaling out the feet. You can do that. You can add in any extra movements that feel good in your body. Let it kind of be the roadmap, the guide. I'm giving you some guidance, but ultimately you are in your body. You'll know what's too much or too little. Good. Let's lower the knees. Coming into a child's pose here. We're going to do a little adjustment of the hands here. We're going to tent the palms. So I'm going to come up onto my fingertips as I've got like two grapefruits under my palms there. Arms stay long, chest and forehead drop down a little bit. But we'll feel as the hands are positioned just a little bit higher, we get a little bit more of that stretch out of the armpits there. Oh, welcome Subo, I didn't hear you come in. Nice. Yep. And we'll see if we can tent those palms even higher. We'll get just a little bit more of a uh, stretch out of the shoulders there. Good. And from this position, see if you can, you don't even need to look up at me, just see if you can take your shoulder blades through a little bit of a circle here. What does it feel like in this shape to try to take your shoulder blades through all of their positions? It may not come easily. It's not going to be as smooth or as pretty as when we do this in a seated position. But just noticing what your body can do out of that shape. Yeah, mine, mine looks a little clunky as well, but I'm noticing, oh, here's what elevation through my scaps, retraction through my scaps, depression through the scaps all feel like in this kind of overhead shape. Very good. Let's bring those tented hands back to palms, curl the toes under, come forward into all fours, and exhale up and back into downward facing dog. 
Maybe we have a little bit more space now in the upper arms, in the shoulders to allow your chest to sink a little closer to the thighs. Wonderful. Let's walk the feet forward. We're at the front of the mat in a forward fold, letting everything hang really heavy here. You can shake the head yes or no. Feel tension dissipating here, especially as we breathe. We can think of that exhale breath as a softening, a, a letting go breath. Everything melting away as you let that air out. Good. Slide the hands up to the shins. Inhale, come halfway up. It's a long spine here. And hold. See if you can get a little bit more arch out of the back. And that may happen by increasing the bend in the knee. So we feel all of those muscles that run up the spine working really hard here. As we look straight down, we keep the back of the neck long. Take one more breath. And exhale, deepen into that fold. So we're going to bend the knees to allow both hands to get to the floor. We're going to take a big step back with that left foot. Keep the hands on the floor. We're going to look up for a runner's lunge. Nice. Try to keep that back leg as straight as you can. It might lift your hips up. Notice how I just had this little micro bend, but as I really squeeze, my hips lift up a little bit higher, but I'm actually getting more of a stretch. Now with that thigh locked, then we can get heavier into that leg there. Nice. Now from here, we can just straighten that front leg as much as you can while keeping your hands on the floor. You'll have a little bit more room if you have blocks. Putting them under you might allow you to get to that complete straight leg. It doesn't have to be that to get the benefits of the stretch as long, we're, as, long as we're feeling something in the back of that right leg. Sweet. Feel your hip crease, right, where your pocket opens up, pulling behind you, right? Create a little bit more space there. Nice, yep. Rebend into that right leg. Step that left foot forward. That's our forward fold. Just be here for a moment. Feel the difference between the right and the left leg. Again, I'm shaking out my head, yes and no. Whatever movements kind of call to you. Next inhale, slide halfway up. Straightening out through the spine. Sending the tailbone back, crown of the head forward. I'll give you that nice, long, straight line. And we're breathing here. One more breath. Exhale, release into that fold. Allow the hands to come to, towards the floor. Bend the knees a little deeper if, if you need to. Right foot steps way back. Hands stay on the ground. We can look up here, getting that runner's lunge. Yep, looking good. Back leg really straightening here. Excellent. Now, as much as that back leg was straightening, we're going to try to straighten through the front leg. And again, we want to prioritize being able to keep the hands on the ground. So if you can only get to about halfway before your hamstrings are like, nope, that's fine. If you can go all the way and straighten that leg, it's there. It's no better or worse if you get to full straightening. But whatever variation you find yourself in, that back leg, oh, nice. Hey, Adriana. That back hip crease where that pocket is, is going to pull backwards. We can see that our tendency is for this left side to shorten up like a short accordion. But we are going to 
push that hip back behind us. And you can even use your hand to kind of inform that movement. Sometimes it helps to have that external cue if we haven't quite mapped it out in our body yet and internally. Sometimes having that external, even if it's your own hand, if I'm not there to kind of correct you, your own hand can kind of act as your own assist at times. Wonderful. Rebending into that left leg, looking forward, step that right foot to meet the left. Ah, we should come into a standing position. Let's roll up, bend the knees, draw the pelvis underneath you. Feel the abdominals kind of crunching you up to a vertical position. Pardon my, I got a fan on me here. Hopefully there's no wind noise that you can hear. Good. We're in our standing shape. Let's inhale, reach both arms up. We're gonna interlace the fingers at the top here. We'll do a little side bending action. Exhale over to the right. I may or may not be mirrored. I've got two things going on here. But if it's different than me, we're just going over to the right side and we'll do both. So it will be fine. Inhale back up to standing. Exhale over to the other side. Good. Let's bring it back up. One more time over to the right. See if there's any more space that we can get out of the the left rib cage there. Ooh. And I'm actually pulling my knuckles away from me. That's stretching my arms a little straighter. That's giving me more of a stretch down the lats. Perhaps you feel the same. Inhale to come up. Exhale to go over to the other side. And again, maybe your elbows are bent here. We can pull those fingertips to really add intensity to the side body stretch. Let's come on up here. Oh. Hands to the hips. We're going to heel toe the feet out about hip distance apart. Good. Inhale, big reach. Exhale, forward fold. So we're a little wider here. Hands to the floor. We're going to kind of grease this malasana before we settle into it. So I'm at a forward fold. I've got my feet heel toed off to the edges of the mat. Hands are on the floor or close to it. I'm gonna inhale, get a little taller through the spine, right? Kind of straightening in the spine and exhale, I'm gonna drop my tush. We're gonna do this five times before we settle. Inhale, lift the hips, lift the chest. Exhale, keep that spine straight, just drop the booty. Three more, inhale, tailbone high, also chest lifting. Really big hamstring stretch. Exhale. Two more in breath. Straighten the leg. Lift the chest. Exhale. Drop that booty. Last one here, and then we're going to settle. Exhale. Lower the hips. So now we can settle into our yoga squat. Hopefully, that helped to kind of grease the hips a little bit to make this uh, a bit more accessible. Now, if you don't have your heels on the ground, I mean, this is this can be a tough position for some. So your squat may look a little something like this with the heels lifted. Eventually, as the ankles, that angle here can close, we can get into this shape a little bit more. But it looks like everybody's got their malasana. Nice. Yeah, Adriana, are your heels down on the ground? Cool. Okay, so we all got it. Yep, we got a couple of things that we can do here. If you're just happy in this static pose, just like Sarah was doing there, you can take your head into some shoulder circles. It's a little bit different when we're in this shape. Ooh. And we are going to take some kind of twi upper body twists out of this as well. Once you've gone both directions with your head turns, We are gonna straighten the left arm only, down to the floor. So I'm gonna pin, I'm using my arm to kind of pin my knee from collapsing inward. And then that right arm is gonna inhale. You're gonna reach, 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 reach. So the more I open this right arm towards the sky, 
the more I'm pushing my elbow into my knee. So I'm kind of pulling open with the arm, pressing open with the knee. You can kind of see the action here. I'm going to I'm going to just flow through it, right? As I open up, you're also pushing that knee further open. Yeah. Some of you want to go for a half bind. All we do is turn the palm backwards, bend the elbow, and reach for that left hip crease. That's our half bind. Our full bind here, if you want to go into it, left thumb turns way down. Go even beyond. It like points backwards, and you can bend your elbow and connect finger to finger. If you've got that bind, either one, we want to lift the chest. Keep trying to pry it open. Yes. Good. Letting go of that bind. Coming back to center here. Both hands down. Let's lift the hips. Just come into a brief forward fold. And you can sway the hips from left to right. We're going to drop back down into this in un momento. This is a bilingual class. I didn't know. I don't know if you knew that. All righty. On the other side here, we're going to drop it like it's hot. Butt drops down. Chest is tall. Right hand plants to the floor. Left arm is going to reach up. And maybe this is a lot. You can always stay here. You can kind of tilt open. You don't have to go for the full reach. Half bind. We turn the palm, bend the elbow. We're grabbing behind the back for the right hip crease. Full bind. We take that right arm, reach it way out in front of us, turn the thumb down, and then keep going. Right? Notice it rolls my whole shoulder into internal rotation. Then my elbow can bend behind me, and I can make that connection there. I don't know if you got that big giant pop out of your shoulder like I just did, but it was very satisfying. Okay. Woo! All right, our Warrior Twos are going to be really accessible with all of this hip opening before we even do it. Sweet. Undo the bind here, reaching up, bringing it back to center. Send the hips up into the air. Nice. Good. Plant the hands. Let's step into our plank. You can flow through a vinyasa. If you know full chaturanga, you can go for that. Otherwise, we're going to exhale over the knees first, then chest and chin. Keep the butt high in the air. On the inhale, we're sliding everything forward, lifting up the chest, cobra, or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Right leg lifts up into the air. And you can even bend the knee and open the hips vertically. As the hips level and the knee comes forward, we're going to step that between the hands there. Now, we're going to drop the back heel, prepping for warrior two, but we're not going to go there quite yet. I want to do some groundwork first. So we've got our warrior two base set up. Right foot is straight forward, left foot is off to 90 degrees. We're going to take the hands and walk them off the left edge of the mat. All right, so the knee is still driving forward. I'm actually actively pressing it towards the right edge of my mat. Right? And just to give you reference, you don't even need to come up here, but all I've done is taken my warrior two stance and I brought it down, but we will get to warrior two in just a moment. Yeah, so we're actively opening that right knee. If you want a little more passive, Take the right hand, fingers down, and push that hip away from you. I'm going to change my angle so you can see a different perspective. Right? Here's my base. I'm going to use that hand, and I can push back. And that's a nice hip opener there. Yep. 
Yeah, there you go. So we're going to get really solid through our trunk. And from this position, we're going to feel strong downward pressure through the feet. We're going to try to lift the hands into a T and press up to our warrior two. Hello. Nice. Yep, you can press up, Adriana. Perfect. Let's flip the palms, reverse our warrior. And again, as you reach those fingertips away, we have more opening through right side body. Oh. Good. Inhale back up to a T. Exhale. Bend the elbow. Bring the left fingertips up and over the body in line here. Extended side angle. So if you need to modify this, actually, this is probably the most mellow version of this. You can go a little deeper. Bringing that hand to the floor. There's also the bind here. We go back and around. I'm not gonna do that, my hips are like, what are you doing? You drove eight hours yesterday. Every day is a little different. Nice, we got some binds happening. Sweet. So for those of you who have that connection hand to hand, all right, we're gonna try to, to uh, lift the chest. Yes, all right, and that's gonna pull Right? If you lift the chest up, it's going to pull those shoulder heads open. You're going to feel more of that stretch across the front of the shoulders. Good. Let's come up. Everyone else is like, why, why is he doing that? Straighten that front leg. Let's come into our triangle. So I'm going to tip my hips. Boop. I'm going to reach my right hand way out there until I can't anymore. And that's where my hand just drops and lands. Now envision the length of your upper side. Envision the length of your bottom side. Have we closed down the bottom side and lengthened this top side? If so, can we try to make them equal? Notice I came up a little bit higher, Oop. but the trunk angle is a little straighter, right? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, a block, very handy here. Because if you're seeking the floor and you're bending over to get there, we're getting a lot of the stretch, but we're not getting some of the subtle nuances that really make triangle a, a sweet pose. Nice. Good. Let's look down at the floor. As you inhale, come on up. Zip. Hands to the hips. We're going to turn ourselves to face the front of the mat. Okay, we're going to bump the uh the hips up here or excuse me the back foot so that the feet are a little bit closer here's our pyramid pose same idea we're just now forward facing inhale nice and tall exhale we hinge forward try to keep your spine long here i'd rather you be higher up with a straighter spine than hit the floor and be all super rounded so a great place for blocks if you have them if you don't have blocks you can use your shin Now we're going to bend into that front leg enough so that you can place your hands on the floor. Now as we place the hands on the floor, set them about six inches in front of you, and we're coming into our standing split. So I've just bumped my weight forward over the front leg, straightened that leg, and lifted the left leg towards the sky. Well, mine's not really much of a split, but <laughs> legs are split. I feel my intense stretch. It's going to be really tempting to kind of like roll that hip open. See if you can keep those hips level and just lift that leg. It's okay if it doesn't look like, you know, a ballerina or whatever. I sure as hell don't. Nice. Now, as you bend into the right knee, we're going to take a big step back. Drop that heel, let's windmill into our warrior two. And here we are again. So we're gonna take like a 10 second hinge. We're gonna go back to that kind of stretch that we started all of this with, but we're gonna do it really, really slow. So I've got my warrior two base set up. 
I'm gonna to start to send my hips backwards and I'm gonna take about 10 seconds to hinge to parallel. Eight, seven, six. Once you've gotten to your bottom most position, hold there, five, four, three. Keep that right knee opening out, two, one. Hands to the floor. Let's walk it back to the front of the mat and send that right leg into our plank. Nice. You can take a vinyasa here if you need to take a rest, child's pose. I'm gonna, you can do knees, chest, chin. I'm gonna do chaturanga. So we exhale down. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Good, I wanna do a little fallen triangle here. So that right leg lifts up into the air. As you exhale, bring that right knee forward about halfway. And then we're gonna take that right leg, kick it out underneath you so that it's off to the side of the mat. You can keep both hands there or we can open. It's kind of this side plank with that right leg kicked out like a kickstand. For an added challenge, that foot actually floats off the ground. We're here for five, four, yeah, three, two, one. Lower that hand, bring that foot back to plank, and let's just settle into a child's pose and just feel the right side versus the left side. We're going to even all of that out. I promise you. Just breathing, getting back to that nice, calm, collected breath that we started with. Okay, inhale coming up to all fours. Exhale, curl the toes, send it up and back, downward dog. Left leg floats into the air. We're gonna bend the knee and open the hips. As we square the hips, that knee comes back down. It's gonna shift forward. I'm gonna try to step that left foot between the hands. Now we set up our warrior two base. I'm gonna drop that heel, keeping the knee aiming forward. I'm gonna walk my hands off to the right edge of my mat. I'm actually gonna turn around so you can see. Here. So I'm trying to be perpendicular to my own body. I've got this plane that's kind of going this way with my legs, and then I am, my upper body is going this way here. Nice. Well, Sarah, I thought you had a question, but you were just, you're just very close to your computer. <laughs> it's okay, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. So actively, we're opening that knee out. If you want a little more passive, take the left fingertips, fingers down, and you can kind of push that hip open. That's a nice stretch. You might feel a difference between left and right. Awesome. Ooh, I like that little forearm, down on the forearm variation there, Kate, nice. Okay. So we're gonna come up to our warrior two. The base is the same, we just lift up. Ooh, I had to straighten that leg for a second because I'm already feeling it. Here's our warrior two. We reverse it. Reaching through those fingertips will give you just a little bit more space that opens up out of the waistline. The left side there. Good, let's bring it back. Warrior two, I even had to straighten my leg, my goodness. Rebending if you had to straighten. We're gonna bend the elbow, bring that right arm in line with the body. Extended side angle. 
If you, um, if you went in a little deeper there, you can lower that hand. You can go for the bind. Nice. Extended side angle. <laughs> nice. A little under the bridge variation there, Sarah. I like it. Sweet. Yes. Okay. Let's bring things back up. If you had the bind, we will unwind. Bring it back up to vertical. Straighten the leg. So I like to start by tipping the pelvis. Then we're reaching out. And you can lower that hand down. <gasps> Excuse me. <laughs> you can use a block here as well. But again, we're mindful of the length of both the left and the right side body. Have we crunched down on the underside to get lower? If so, can we even those sides out? Maybe come a little higher, but I feel more here than if I were to round down just to get to the floor for whatever's sake. So just... Consider your intention, what, what it is you're going for. Nice. Let's inhale, rising up. Good. We're going to bring our hands to the hips, turn the pelvis. While doing so, back that, excuse me, bump the back foot a little further forward. We're coming into our pyramid. Okay. Inhale, nice and tall. Exhale, hinging forward. Hands can rest on blocks. Maybe you're at the floor. If you're not quite there, most of us probably aren't. Uh, we're going to be on the shin somewhere. Just avoid right into the knee. You don't want to go right into that knee joint. It does not bend that way. If it does, we got some problems. your breath. Good. Last inhale. Exhale there. Bend into the left knee enough to plant your hands six or eight inches in front of you. We're coming into our standing split. Top of the mat. I'm at the back because I switched so you could see me. Notice what your split feels like. It doesn't need to be high to be effective. Nice. As we bend that knee, we're going to send that right leg back. And we're coming into that warrior two base again. So we'll drop the heel to a 90. We'll windmill up to our warrior two. Now from here, we're going to just simply hinge at the waist. And we're going to take about 10 seconds to, here's my warrior two, I'm just hinging this way. Once you get to your lowest position, we'll hold. And then at the end, we will plant the hand. So here we go. 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Keep pulling that left knee out, four. Three, just hover at your lowest point if you're already there. Two, one. Ah, hands come down. They're going to walk to the front of the mat again. And we will step that left foot into plank. Ah. But we're not done just yet. You can take a vinyasa or just meet us in downward dog. And from there, we're going to set up for our fallen triangle. Left leg up into the air. We bring that bent knee forward. We're going to send about halfway up. We're going to send that left leg off to the right edge of the mat. Okay. You can keep both hands here. You can feel downward pressure. Otherwise, we're going to open that right hand to the sky, making this a little bit harder by just floating that foot if you want. It's already hard enough for most of us. Five, four, three, 
two, one. Bring that right hand down. You can step it into plank. And again, let's settle into our child's pose. Hopefully feeling more even through the hips. Appreciating the equal sensation. Maybe you have a helper that's giving you downward pressure in your child's pose. <laughs> I'm going to have to put him on my payroll as, a, as an assistant. <laughs> yeah, surprisingly, no, uh, no animals today. Usually I see the cats or the dogs coming out, but uh, just rambunctious kiddos. Oh, I'm sure there's a, yeah, now, there, yeah, now we're getting the, uh, the doggos. Oh, hey, Ozzy. <laughs> That's great. All righty. <clears throat> Let's come back into our downward facing dog. I just want to do a little bit of hip greasing before we go to seated. So let's come into our down dog. Right leg up into the air. I'm going to turn so you can see what I'm doing. Usually we do this in the beginning, but <clears throat> let's do it here. We're going to bend the knee, make giant circles with your bent leg. You probably have more range now that we've done some hip opening. We'll do three to five, and then we'll switch directions. It's not about doing them fast. It's about doing them big and smooth. I've switched my directions. Nice. Okay, so we're going to shift forward into a pigeon, but we're going to do a little bit of a hold first. So as we shift forward, I'm going to pivot my bent knee so that my, my right ankle is aiming towards my left wrist. And we're going to hover here for five, Ooh, four, three, two, one. You can set that down. Now you can come into your kind of the more traditional pigeon. If you've been in my class, you know I prefer the modified where we allow the hip to sit on the floor. And then we come into this 90-90 shape. Okay. Whatever variation you would like to take, if you're in pigeon, like a more, more traditional expression of it, and there's space of this hip, see if you can plug that space. I'm using a block. Now I'm actually resting. I feel just the same intensity of stretch, but my hips feel a stop point. If you're just suspended in the air, sometimes our nervous system will, <laughs> will lock up. It'll put on the brakes because it doesn't know where the end point is. So just to be safe and to keep you safe, it'll actually uh, tighten up rather than allow it to soften into the stretch. When your hip feels that you, you are on a block, a blanket, the floor, whatever, then the nervous system starts to give up, not give up, but it allows you to go to some of these deeper positions. Nice. Oh, there you go, yep. Perfect. So we're going to do the same active hold that we came in. And it feels really hard because we don't often work the, the inner hip angle. So what the challenge will be, coming up to the hands, the shin is as close to parallel to the front of the mat as possible. I'm going to flex my toes. And as I curl the back toes under and lift into a plank, I'm going to try to hover that leg exactly where it is. Five, four, 
counting really slow. Three, two, one. Good. Send it up and back. You can go into that three-legged dog. And if you want to, you could even drop into your waterfall. What is that? Well, from three-legged dog, if you peek under the armpit, you can see that foot. It can land and you can drop, sending that hip up towards the sky. And it's not for everyone. You don't have to do this pose. You can just sit happy in your three-legged dog. We're going to unwind out of that flipped dog if you did so. And we'll straighten that leg, level the hips, and drop that down. Good. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Left leg is up into the air. We're going to bend that knee. We're going to make those big hip circles. Three to five, and then we'll change directions. Making them slow, making them smooth. When you're even on both sides, we begin to shift forward, knee towards the nose, not quite there, because about halfway up, we're gonna pivot that right ankle, excuse me, the left ankle to come up towards the right wrist. And I'm hovering here, holding five, four, three, two, one. We can lower that leg and drop into whatever pigeon variation you did on the other side. So again, the modified pigeon comes out of 90 90 so you can actually be onto your left hip and stretch forward i actually did a more traditional pigeon on my side so i'm going to demo that here now if i'm being honest and keeping this knee angle open i have quite a bit of space here so i'm going to want to plug it give my hips something to actually feel like an end point so that I can start to soften into this. Nice. Subu, are you able to uh, pivot your body a little bit more counterclockwise to square your sternum to your thigh just like that? Yep. And so you're gonna aim the decal on the center of your shirt off to the left side of your thigh. Yes, that's it. You got it. Feel how that winds up down into the hip there? Yep. We're going to make our way back up. One more active hold before we're in the clear. Hands come right back under the shoulders. We're going to curl the back toes under or straighten the leg if you were in the 90-90 first. And we're going to lift those hips up. I'm going to try to keep the same angle of my knee. Maybe I'll try it this way so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. I'm going to try to lift up. Oh, and hold that there. Ay, ay, ay. Four, five, four, three, two, one. Good. Send it up and back. If you flipped your dog, you can do that here as well. Otherwise, just enjoy the three-legged dog. Yep. Yeah, looking good. There you go, Adriana. You can straighten your right leg. Adriana, you can straighten that right leg. It's your left leg heel driving into the floor that really bumps your hips high there we go belt buckle to the to the sky yeah good we're unwinding out of our flipped dog 
Ah, lower the leg to the floor, lower both knees to the floor. Ah, and we're going to sit the hips to the side and come to seated. Where are we on time here? Beautiful. We'll just do a little bit of a bound angle pose here. So bring both knees into the chest, allow the knees to open wide. And, uh, ooh, I don't know if anybody has the room. I was going to add in like a little movement challenge. I'll show it if you want to do it. Otherwise, we can stay here. So, man, I don't know if I have enough room. <clears throat> We're going to be in our bound angle pose. Nothing fancy here. I've got, I'm connected to my hands. I just want to move this so you can see. You can stay with the static pose here, okay? There is a little bit of a fun movement. We're gonna end up kind of rolling and landing back into our shape here. I should have tested this before class to see if it would work in my space, but I'm gonna give it a go anyway. So my hands are connected. I'm gonna roll over to my thigh and then across my back. And I, end up, I didn't have enough momentum there. I'm going to roll thigh, back, thigh, up. And then I go again, thigh, back, other thigh, and up. I'm back to normal. Whoops. I accidentally hit my timer button. So you have 17 seconds to try it on your own now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know, we've got these points. It's kind of like a, a, like a pa pentagon, hexagon. I don't know how many sides there are. So as you lean over... We hit the right thigh, boop. Then I kind of hit my right rib cage and roll across, left thigh, and I'm up. Yeah. And so you got to do it once or twice to kind of get back to, the, back to the start of it. Yes. But it takes a little momentum, and it takes a little bit of staying tight to kind of like pull yourself back up to that seated position. So if you're able to go around and, and get 360, try it in the other direction too. Let's see how it feels. You guys are getting it though. Yeah, Sarah, you got it. But it's, it's kind of fun though. Once you get into a rhythm, you're just like, whee! Oh. <laughs> yes. You, Nick, Sarah, your little helper back there is, is he's got it too. <laughs> Okay, were you able to get it? Yeah? Oh, you got a question. Okay, let's unmute you. What's up? Oh, no, don't unmute. Okay. She's just ordering just lunch. One way. What's up? I just got one way. Oh, you got one way. You want to try it or is it too hard on the concrete there? You are not. Uh, it's probably fine, but I don't want to try it. <laughs> okay, no worries. You're fine. You don't need to. All right. So, ah. Uh, I have rocks. What's that? They had rocks, so I don't want to hit oh, yeah, the rocks. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's like, think of it as acupuncture. <laughs> acupuncture in your, in your yoga treatment. Cool. Nice. It's always fun to play with some movement stuff in here. Hence the name Yoga Playground, because we play. We have fun with our bodies. So from your bound angle pose, you can recline. Ah, so we're slowly winding things down. And we'll use the hands to scoop the knees so that if they're pointing straight up into the air. Let's just do a quick little uh, modified bridge here before we wind things down. Draw the heels into the hips. They're going to be about hip distance apart. Inhale, lift the hips up into the air. And you may stay here. This might be plenty. Going a little deeper, fingers interlace underneath the body. But notice it's just right now it's my lower arm. So we actually want to tuck the upper arm bones underneath the torso, so really broad across the collarbones. And that gives me even more extension through the spine. I'm gonna let all of that go there. 
perfect. Yeah, we have just enough time for our twist and our shavasana. So we'll pull the knees into the chest. And we've got several variations of twists that I've taught through the class. So if there's one that you like more than the other ones, uh, you can do that. For now, I'm just going to teach both knees into the chest. Fall over to your right side. Anchor your knees. Then that left arm can reach up and over. We can settle. A real big breath here. Nice deep inhale. Good. Let's come out of your twist and we'll set up on the other side. The knees and the whole body can roll over to the left side. The right arm will come up and over. We're coming back upright. Preparing for your final Shavasana. If there's any other movement you'd like to do, a back bend, an inversion, uh, you're more than welcome to do that. If you got to get going, it's about one right now, but hopefully you have a couple of extra minutes to, uh, to spend on yourself. And um, yeah. Subu, you got a question before we drop into Shavasana? Nope, you're good. Cool. He's got to head out, I think. We'll just say there. No problem, Subu. So we'll see you next time. Thank you for coming. All right. Let's settle in. We're going to get into our Shavasana, making yourself comfortable here. You can cover yourself up. You, can, you may not need to. It's a warm day today, at least here in the States. <clears throat> you can close the eyes. Allowing the body to become heavy. Let the floor hold all of your weight. Oh.
Take a nice big inhale. Move the fingers and toes. Any movement into the ankles and the wrists. Bringing the arms up overhead, stretch them out long as you take a big breath in. One more time, big inhale, big reach. Bend the knees into the chest. Allow your body to roll towards one side. Ah, we'll come up to a seated position. If you've got time to stay there, feel free, please. Don't let me rush you. But um, I just want to close class and thank all of you for coming today. And uh, I always appreciate everybody that, that joins in class. And uh, I'll keep doing this until we're, we're not locked down anymore. <laughs> and then I'll keep doing it too. So thank you so much. Namaste. I'm going to stick around, um, say hello, take any questions.